Hashman. What do you know about mechanics? Nothing. Whatever I know, I learned from you. Oh yeah, for sure you know nothing. If you learn from me. That's good. Yemi. Beginner. Erika. Nothing. I don't know. I can take things apart and not put them back together. So. Yeah, but just if we're still missing, right? Yeah, you know, as long as you can take them apart, it's already a good start. Yeah. This is how most of us mechanics learn. We just take apart things and then we figure out how to put them back. Yeah? It's okay. Yeah, maybe we start because the introduction is pretty short. So, then we talk about this, yes? But we will be showing you Talk about dropping tools. Yeah, oh, dropping okay. tools and stuff. So, we have three types of mechanics in general. Mechanics as people, yes? Professional mechanic, which is this guy. This is just, you know, makeup scene. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> then we have mechanics that are working at home, which are you guys. Mm -hmm. Then we have mechanics that have no clue about anything, and these guys are many at the shops, yes? In China. <laughs> yeah. yeah? So, the thing is that to be a good mechanic takes time and takes courage. And best if you train on your own bike, yes? If you do it professionally or you are paid for it, you cannot learn on customer's bike, yes? But because you own, everybody owns bike here, you will learn on your, your own, yes? So don't be afraid to, you know, to play with this, like, if you don't know how to change a flat, best resources, of course, internet, or you can ask me. But the internet is the quickest, I guess. So YouTube or just stream and try on your own. Because there are certain things that you do according to the book. So you have like a manual and yeah, I can show you a book that you... This is always a good start. Let me find it. This is always a good start for everything, yeah? So we have this guy, the Zine. Leonard Zine is one of the most famous publisher when it comes to bike mechanics. This guy is basically since 1945 writing books about how to fix bikes, yeah? This is already what? Well. <laughs> see, 160,000 copies sold. This is fifth edition of the book. This is about mountain bikes, yes? This is what? Well, fourth edition. And you see, this is how, how thick it is. And this just covers maybe 60%, let's say up to 70% of what you should know as a professional level mechanic. But it's a good start. If you have no money or no time or whatever, and you don't want to come to a bike shop, or come to us, then having a book like this is always a good source of information. Yeah? Awesome. Your arms have become better with the book, what? No, yeah. This is my first time I have, I have a book in my hand, so. <laughs> After so, holding the Because the I cannot arm, read. Arm, but. Arm exercise. Yes. So in general, in book like this, they will cover bit by bit, yes? So you have, for example, what is useful to have as a bike mechanic, mm -hmm. as your home workshop, or in general in the workshop, yes? Because you see, we, our workshop is very small, so we have only tools that we need, or that we use mostly. There are certain parts that we cannot fix, and we send this to other, like, you know, premium bike shops. Because for us, if we need to buy a tool that costs like 2,000 RMB, and we know we will use it like once in our life, then there's no need to, we rather send the guys to, to the shop that can do it. Okay. So if you have a book, they will give you first introduction, like shifting system, yes? Shifting system, for example. Yeah? Then you go, okay, what is the radar? Front and rear the radar. Then what are shifters? And so on and so on. Then how to adjust? And what are common issues? And, th and you see the system thick like this. Do they have translation in Chinese? Yeah, they should have the, the Chinese book or the Chinese edition. Or whichever, like in Spanish or I think the, the Taiwan has a translation. Yeah. So if you want if you want a good source of information, I suggest to get a book like this. Or just, you know, if you have access to the internet, and I guess you have because we are in the 21st century, then 
Yeah, and it's pretty easy. I found it in a library in Costa Rica. It was in English, so I'm not sure if it's in Spanish. Sure, no. Sure. Uh, it's in Polish. It's even in Polish. If it's in Polish, it should be in Spanish also. <laughs> but okay. So let's start from the beginning, maybe. What is the bike? Yeah, the bike is here. And this is just one type of the bikes that you can see here, because we have a lot of different stuff. This is all mechanical group set, which means everything is activated with the, with the steam line, like this, okay? So shifting and brakes are activated with, the, with lines. Then we have behind you this beautiful Colnago that you can see. This is electronic group set and these brakes. You have also electronic group set and the rim brakes, which we don't have here to, to show you but you need to trust me on that. And then, this is Shimano Di2, and all the connections between shifters and derailers are done by the cable, yes? I can show you a cable, because it's super easy. Where's the box? Yeah, this is the And there is that type of the bike, which is electronic wireless group set, and it's here, it's my bike. Take it to, to you and this. This is also a disc brake. But here, as you see, here, the derailers, there's no cable, no mean, nothing, yes? Here. No cables, yes? So this is all wireless connection. And now at the moment, this is quite popular group set on the market. They already introduced 12 speed. So if you want to spend a lot of money, then call me, I will get you this stuff. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Okay. But we start from the beginning, yeah? So we will focus now on the mechanical group sets. Uh, because this is, as a mechanic, even if you have just one bike with certain type of group set electronic, for example, and most of the bikes now are electronic and, and disc brakes, you still need to know the basics, yes? Mm -hmm. So, uh, we have here like this. Shifters, which are responsible for braking and changing gears. Yeah, this is the braking lever and this is shifting. This is Shimano, so, one lever can do three things, yeah? Or two levers in this case, yeah? This is to change gear, this is to change gear, and this is to brake. If you have Campagnolo, you will have one to brake, one to change gear, and then here inside, under your thumb, you will have another one to change gear also. So everything is separated, which is a bit easier. In SRAM mechanical, you will have brake, which will work like this, and one lever that can do both things, so upshift and downshift. Because it's, it's called double tap. So one, one click means go down, and two clicks will go up. It's a bit complicated for the first few minutes, but, but it works pretty well. Then we have the drive train, and the drive train is built with derailleur. This is the front derailleur, and this is brace on. You can come closer, I will show you what brace on means. Brace on basically means that you have the mount on the frame. There is also the brace on English. Brace on is... Yeah, brace on. Yeah, and then the clamp. Yeah, yeah. like this, this is the clamp right yeah. here. So the clamp, the clamp is the old type, so the railer comes with the clamp. Now the newer bikes only have this brace on, but if you have older type, with the clamp, you need to change the derailleur, yes? If you have older bike, a newer derailleur, you can still buy a clamp adapter. So it's easier, but you cannot do the opposite. And the rear derailleur, and the rear derailleurs come in two types, mainly, short cage and long cage. So long cage means that you can put a bigger cassette, which is helpful when you need to climb, yes? Then the cassette, which has this one has 11 gears, so it means 11 cogs. And this is 11 watt. 
You can have now in Shimano, you can have up to, if we talk about road bikes, up to 11.34. So this is 11, the smallest one is 11.30, and 34, the biggest one here is. Then crank set. In road bikes, we have two types at the moment. Uh, two wheels and one wheel, so we have one by 11 or one by 12, or two by 11, two by 12. In this case, we have two by 11. So in total, you have 22 gears. Buongiorno. Leito. Pretty Leito. Scholastic. Um, no, not, not today. Grab your seat. Uh, then, in the frame itself, because this is the frame, yeah, the frame is made of two, two triangles. The big one here, this is the front triangle. This one, the rear triangle. Uh, you have two important things, which is the bottom bracket that holds the crankset. And for bottom bracket, at the moment, we have like four or five standards. So we have, in the old times, there were only two standards, BSA, which is British threaded, and ITA, which is Italian threaded. And it was super simple, yeah? If your bike came from Italy, it was Italian. If it came from every other place in the world, it was British, yes? So it was super simple. At the moment, you have still BSA and ITA, so two, yes? Then Pressfit, which is, Shimano has, I think, five o on its own. Then you have BB30, then you have PF30, then you have BB Evo 386, and now there is a new standard, which is also threaded. And this is T47, it was introduced by, by one of the brands that makes bearings and headsets and, and BBs. So now people try to switch to, to T47 because it enables them to do new things with the cranksets. In the old times, cranksets came only in one size, so the axle of the, of the spindle in this case, of the cranksets was only in one size. And then with time they started to play, make it bigger because it's stiffer, change the materials from steel to aluminium for example, or titanium. And because of that they had to invent new bottom bracket standards because the old ones simply could not fit the, the thicker axle through. Yes. Uh, then we have brakes of course. So these are the brakes, mechanical rim brakes. In the other sports, you have also hydraulic rim brakes, like Mandula HS33 or 11, like in bike trail, for example. Buongiorno. Bumi, Hoshu. Buongiorno. 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 Shut up. Buongiorno. Then, for rim brakes, we have three types also. So this is the standard rim brake, then there is like this, just direct mount, so it has two holes. This one is mounted by one screw in the middle, yeah? This is like this since, God knows how long, like at least 30, 40 years, like this mounted, yes? And the direct mount was introduced few years back to give more stiffness to the brake caliper, and it's mounted by two screws. And the third type is mounted here below, for aerobikes, for example, or TT bikes. And this is pain in the ass to adjust. But you can, like, I guess you have like this, yes? Yeah, and you have TT bike. It. Yeah. So, so these are basically the, the three main main types. Then for these brakes, you have mechanical lead brakes, which are actuated with the line. And then hydraulic disc brakes are here, which is actuated by oil. And hydraulic disc brakes is separate by the type of oil they have. Either mineral, Shimano, Formula, Magura, or DOT, like in the car. Most of them are DOT 5.1, like this slam, like on my bike. If you put DOT in mineral oil disc brakes, it will eat your seats, yes? So you need to always remember. But I guess for this kind of stuff, better if you go to a shop, because shop has tools and knowledge to do as it should be. Okay? Uh, good. 
And of course we have like Hanuba, yes, stand, seat, seat pole, and headset here. Headset also comes in different standards. Before it was one inch threaded headset, so it was threaded to the frame. Now all the headsets are either drop in or pressed in. And they come in cups or just bearings or yeah, it's even more standard than the, the bottom brackets. Okay. So who's there? Always late. Yeah, in this case, the late. Now coming to wheels. Wheels. Who knows how many types of wheels we have on the market? What? Yeah, but who knows what types? You can divide it by material or by the type of the tire that they take. Yes, so three, yeah. So the, the first type invented was tubular, which has tire that contains tube inside, yes, and it's sewed together and you need to glue it to the rim. So the rim has no hooks, nothing, yeah, it's just, just like this. Then, cincher, which most of you are using, is the, the standard rim with hooks. I can draw it here. So the rim will be like this. Yes. And then this spoke here. Looks like a dick. <laughs> then this is the clincher. Yes. Let's give it the camera down. <laughs> and then tubeless actually the ring looks the same, yes. But in mountain bike they have also hookless. Because you hear this hook, yes? Hook. Hook. But now in mountain bike they have like this. Like this. So there is no hook. They only based on the pressure of the the tubeless of the tube to hold the tire in the in the ring. In general, for us, the most common type is the clincher. Yeah, so this is clincher. Chain. Nice. Then hookless, but this is also clincher. Yeah, this is just hookless. Then clincher you divide in two types, tubeless and non-tubeless ready. Yes, tubeless ready is now getting popular in the cycling, road cycling. It was very popular since ages in mountain bike because you just get rid of the tube, which saves on the rolling resistance and then on the snake bites and all this stuff because it's much harder to cut the tire than the tube itself. Yes. Now in road bike. A lot of new bikes come with tubeless setup, or at least tubeless ready rims, which means that the rim, because here is the spoke, yes, but this is hole normal. But new rims, when they come, either this is taped over, which I can show you on my wheel, actually. And I never finish my wheel. The red earring made by me, yes. This special type of tape, special type of tape, and tape it over. And make sure that this is all sealed, yes. You have a special valve, which is this one. And the valve comes here, yes. So there is a seal. The seal and you lock it from here and then let's see the wall. Okay, 
Yeah. Depends on how much you put there. Just lost the widget. This is tubeless and non tubeless basically looks the same just without the tape. Yes. Yes. See, everybody over there is essential. What? And you still need to have a ring tape on the ring for non tubeless setup. If you have holes, because if you pump it, the tube will just explode in because it's quite sharp hole. Most of the producers they just drill through aluminium and the Okay. Let's go to another topic. Everybody's clear about the types of rims we have. Any questions? They also come into different materials, yeah, aluminium and carbon. Some are like half half. So they have, for example, this part is aluminium, and they add you like a aero carbon kind of stuff to make it more aero faster. But if, if the aluminium it would be like this size, then it would be super heavy, yes? So Mavi, for example, is doing like this. They have the, the core of the rim is aluminium, but they give you this nice carbon attachment just makes it faster, you save it away. Yeah? Right, okay. Let's delete this. Mm -hmm. So now we go to what actually is important. Not that this is not important, but... Okay. Who has tools at home? Tools? Yeah, tools. Or oh, mini tools. Okay, what type of tools you have? Like the Allen keys and all that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. What are the most common Allen key yeah. sizes? Five, five, six, four. 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 Non brakes often here uses five or here five or four mil. This is four mil. Always. The yeah. pedals is slightly bigger. So. Pedals six or eight mil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then here non brakes five mil most of the time. The direct mount is also five or or four mil depending on the who makes them. There's Ram or Kanti or Shima derailleur. 5 mil, or if you are a company or a guy, it stocks T25. So, we started having Allen keys, yes, yeah, somebody stole our 8 mil, but happens. <laughs> you should actually have also torque, Torx wrenches. Because now, especially if you start upgrading your bike with some titanium fancy fancy screws, they often come as a Torx head. Because it's just this is basically a great version of, of this as the contact surface is bigger on this one because they have like the notch, it's not like a star yet. Mm -hmm. this only has like six sides but this because it's rounded in this, the surface is bigger it means that the force you put spreads better more evenly okay, so you can't screw up the screw you still can but it's a bit harder yes and then, are you using um, torque wrenches? Yes, yes. So this is the, the base, yes. Set of Allen keys and set of torques. Then, very important tool. Hammer. Yes. Nothing works. <laughs> Even if it works, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you really, trust me, this is one of the most important tool for anything you need to do. Get your money back, fix your bike, <laughs> 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 other stuff. Yes. So this is normal steel hammer, and this is a mallet, rubber mallet. a rubber mallet, yes, which is basically a hammer with a rubberized head, and inside is a sand. So you can still smash it, but now most of the bikes they come 
either as aluminum frames or carbon frames. And then for the fourth, for example, you can have the steel tube, which is made of aluminum or carbon. So if you need to heat it without destroying, we use this, yes. Why would you need to heat it? Yeah. Because sometimes it's stuck, for example, here, or sometimes the crankset yeah. is stuck in the bottom bracket, so you need to just oh, okay. smash it. Stuff gets, stuff gets seized and... Yeah, especially if people easily. don't take care of the bike, yes. Stuff gets seized a lot. We have bikes, for example, we have our racing member, Canon, the Evo, Mod 6, whatever, high mod, you know, top of the range, Canon, the climbing bike. And the frame is carbon, but the seat post is aluminum. And aluminum, as we know, will get messy with time, yes, if it's not properly protected. So basically what happened, the corrosion started to, to go, like build up on the, on the seat post. And in general, the size of the seat post changed, grew bigger, yes. So it was seized here, and because it was goes in up to here, basically from here to here, there was no option to move it, yes. So the only way was, and we tried hammers, yeah, we tried a lot of stuff, the only way was to cut it here and cut it from the inside. Cut? Yes, from the inside, yeah. So that was like, you know, kind of precise surgery. work, yeah. Surgery. Yeah, neuro surgery kind of. But it happens, yeah. So hammer is pretty useful. If you have this at home, not this one, and you need to smash something, best if you use like a small pile of wood or some, you know, layer in between, because if you just smash like this, it will destroy the thing. Yeah, I cannot show you on this bike because it's still <laughs> working, but... It's not yours, yeah. Yeah, I can show you on this GoPro. <laughs> so, so in general, this is useful. I don't say it needs to be used for everything that you do on the bike, but keep it close to you, yeah? And this, this is Juju's bike, right? Eh? No. This Josh, one? Josh. This is Josh. Oh, okay. Josh. And this oh, one yes. is also useful, just because it's a bit more gentle. Yeah. But we use it to smash things, yes? Okay. Then, on the road, do you, do you use any tools on the road? For the do you use it? Do you have it? Well, if I need to, it's just the same. Yeah, you have, because you have to pay. Yeah. That comes with it. So, no, it doesn't come with that. Oh, yeah, because you have the cheap one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, for the roll, because, of course, you see, this is quite big, yes? You're going to take the hammer away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can. For the roll, you just use multi-tools, and multi-tools come in many different options. What you need to make sure is that the multi-tool that you buy contains all the wrenches that you will use on the bike. I know cases where people went to transcontinental race, which is like 4,000 kilometer race, and they, they, they had multi-tool, but they didn't have torx wrench, and basically, you know, they get mechanical problem and they couldn't fix it just because they, they missed one, mm -hmm. one tool. And this is the race that you prepare yourself for like a year, yes? Because it's very intense. So, so just make sure when you buy, when you order, make sure that you have everything that you need for the bike. So at least four, five, six mil, yes? Then flat, and then Phillips if, if possible. Flat screwdriver if, if possible. Then Starks is Okay, because again, it's not only for you, you, most of the time we ride with somebody, yes, and if they have mechanical and they don't know how to use tools or they don't have, they, they, they don't have tools, you can be a superhero, yes, and help. <laughs> yeah, the good thing about the uh, multi-tool is that if you have this with you, then again, you can save everybody, yes. But the important thing is also that you will be not so scared to go further because you always have this thing that can save your ass, yes, on the road. Uh, I suggest that you buy actually a bit bigger ones in size, so when you have a bit longer tools, because very often people like to over-tighten every screw, yes. 
So if it's over tightened, we sometimes use these tools, but sometimes we need a part to use like finger lever and just use force, yeah? So if, you, if it's only like this shot, there is a chance that you will not be able to unscrew it. But it's a good start, yeah? Like this size or like even Erica's size, it's a good start because if everything is properly <laughs> tightened, then it should be okay. Then the third type of tools is the torque wrench that you mentioned. So torque wrenches come most of the time in two sizes. This is the small size, so this is from 2 Nm to 24, which covers 98% of the bike. And here you have bits, yeah? So this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, mm, then T25 torques and T30. Plus T20 and the extension, yeah? because some of the bikes require them need to go deep. And normally, I don't add, you can buy the I don't add, I don't add, like mine. Tabon, tabon, okay. Tabon, you can buy through us. We, we don't have stock now, but we, we can get you this. This I think is 268. Retail. So it's pretty cheap for a top range, but it's good quality. Who's this? Who's this late? So top range has two things, yes? It has a ratchet. Ratchet which is this. Yes. And then it has this switch, so you can do both sides, yes, see? means this way I tighten and then if I switch it goes the other way yeah? so I un unscrew things and then here is the, the gauge how many Newton meters you have set because inside basically the, the construction of this is very simple yeah? basically it's a spring so the, the more you tighten the spring which basically the more you screw down and you can see the more torque you will have so when you reach the top, when you screw things in, let's see if this will work. Let's see. Let's set four, for example. When you do things, you see them, you hear the click? Means that the, you reach the top that you set on the gauge, it, it's calibrated. But they can't calibrate it from the factor again. Yeah? Only with the use you can go, like, make it messy then it's a garbage uh, because you cannot calibrate it at home. You always use the top wrench on your fix the bike? Yeah. As a bike or mechanic in the shop, yes, I should. And I do. Most of the bike shops don't use because they think they have top wrench in hand and then the bike comes here and I'm like, oh. <laughs> 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 and then yeah. That's how you made the iron part. Yes. yes. Now I can tell you which the, uh, who can guess which is the most over tightened or over torqued part in the bike. Six. Six. Close, but not. For me, it is. You weigh like six thousand tons. So. <laughs> the most over torqued part actually are pedals. We try to teach people that pedals. You just need to tighten, you know, like, like like this basically, without any force, because you pedal the way that it will tighten them. But very often when we need to work on the crank sets, I need to use the vice which is there, and it's attached to this whole thing. And I need to use Superman powers to undo it. So basically I need to use my leg and I need to <laughs> just to release it, because this gets pretty messy. People always think that more they tighten the better, but it doesn't work like this. Yes? You just said it goes in the direction you uh, yes. try to draw our back. Um, but we have one set uh, lady who knew to unscrew the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hey, well, yeah well, 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 well. If it's too, too easy, then yeah, it, maybe you can unscrew it, but this requires time. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you in, general, in general, it's pretty hard to unscrew it yeah. during the ride. Because it's pretty big thread and long, so it takes time. 
So if you don't notice that the next thing you are starting to do the spirit, so if you don't know what's going on, you fucked up your crack. You came home. Yeah, that's right. I broke my crack when I just moved to China. Can you catch up to one of those scriptures? Wow. But it's got a direction thing, man. When you put in the pedal, it's got a direction. Yes. Yeah, left and right pedal has has different threads. Yeah, but it tells you which one to put. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you basically, if you don't you don't know how to read or you don't know anything about cars, <laughs> you just try. You just try. Yeah. If it fits, it fits. If it doesn't fit, then it means it's only on the side. Yeah. Super simple. Yeah. That's a good thing about bike mechanics. If you don't know how to do it, you just try. Okay, it doesn't fit. I know people who will be like, oh, it doesn't fit, but it's just you know, it's <laughs> just force, and then it will fit. Yeah. Yep. Once. <laughs> Once, but it happens, and then they come to here, and then I'm like. <laughs> but in general, uh, your pedals are the most overthought part of the bike. Then you have the seat post and seat, because people are always afraid that if they don't do it too tight, then it will be or move back. But unless you are doing yeah, just a like big size boy, then the normally it doesn't require such a big force. It happened to me. What? That the you? Seat goes when yes. <laughs> so, this is the small torque wrench again that will cover most of the bike. So, this covers brakes, yeah, shifters, stand, behaviors, uh, here, seat close in the seat. For things like crank set, you will need to go to the bigger size, which is size like this can you use, uh, use as a weapon? <laughs> Again, to get mine. Yes. Carry the hammer. Yes. I <laughs> always carry that thing in my bag. Yes, you carry it here. <laughs> when you ride. <laughs> you can ride with this and then if the car comes close, it's much safer. You can also up with the chain and... Yeah, also. And you just yeah. chop the gun. So, the construction is exactly the same. Yes, you have the ratchet. Just bigger size, of course. Then you have the switch to, to change left right side. And then the spring inside is here. And here is the how much you you have force now before it kicks, yes? So basically you read on the on the gauge, and depending on the how they make it, then you have gauge like this with a, with line. Most of them come like this. So here is like from zero to ten in the numbers. So if you see, for example, like 40, and here is the, the, the point of reference. So now, if you go up, this is 40, yes? 0, 40. So if you do like this, it means like 44, yes? Because you have 4 here, and then you are above 40. So it's pretty simple, yeah? And then, what you need to do when you use torque range, besides adjusting this, First, what you need to do is actually read what it says here. So, if you know, every time we say like 48 newton meters, so 48 newton meters, for example, mm -hmm. for this particular part. Other parts, like stem, it will be like 5 to 6 newton meters. This will be from 4 to 6 newton meters. This will be from 6 to 8, for example. So, you just need to read, yes, and depending on what amount of torque you need, you just use a bigger one or a smaller one. Okay. You so said 48 for you, correct? Yes. Well, which is... It's pretty... Yeah. Yes. I've never tightened so hard. My cranks are tightened like maybe 25. But according to the book, it should be 48, which requires this one. Yeah. And it's quite a lot of force. Mm -hmm. And for this, of course, you need like a bit, which is the size of... This is half inch because they come in... I don't know why imperial, not, not metric, yes, it's half inch, then you have like what, three quarters, and then something else, but it's sweet. So, in general, you can buy adapters, if you have the big one and the small one, then it's okay. This is quarter of an inch, I think, and this is yeah, half inch, and then, then you have the three quarters. But in general, if you have these two tools at home, you don't need these. Because again, this comes comes with all the all the stuff, and this is way safer if you have carbon frames. 
and most of the new bikes are carbon, yeah, I suggest you get the torque wrench, just to make your life easier. Um, okay. One thing that you need to remember after you finish using torque wrench, you need to undo it, yeah? so whatever torque you had, you need to always go back, because if you leave it with the tension that is there, it will just put force on the spring, which means it will yeah, it will just mess up the spring sooner or later. Yeah, so because it will be become zero? Yep. Yeah. Or go back to when, whenever it's loose, yeah, you will feel that it's loose. Like, and then just keep it like this, and next time when you take it out, yeah, adjust to the torque, use it, and undo it again. People often buy the torque range and they keep it at six, and then they do like six, but it's not more than six, yeah? Mm -hmm. So when they click, it's actually way more. Even if it says it's six, yeah, the gauge will say six, but but it will click up much further stage and then, then it will mess up. When I kept my job for say uh, the last two years at six, then I guess it's already a bit messed up. I never gonna screw it there. <laughs> Strong. The spring is made of steel, so it has certain amount of lifespan. So if you don't, you know. Undo it, then it will just, you know, the fault that is put all the time will just mess up the calibration. Yeah, it will still click most of the time, but yeah. it will not give you the part, the, the torque that you need, you know? Okay. So, just to sum it up, what you need at home, the start, this, yeah, because this you can use also on the road. Mm -hmm. If you are a bit more advanced, you can go with this, which is a set that first requires us to use the torque wrench. Yeah, if you use this, it's easy to over tighten and then you know either you messed up the screw so the head of the screw will be round and then it's pretty hard to take it out. You need to drill or use the screw extractor or you over tighten and you break the thread and either the safe option is to break the thread of the screw so you can pull out the screw, but the worst case is that you break the thread in the nest of the, the screw, yes, and then it's a messed up case. Then you need a tap and make the new thread, but then it requires bigger screw and blah, 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 blah. so it's easier to just replace the part, unless it's super fancy or super boutique or, you know, you are emotionally attached to the part, which happens, then, <laughs> then you need to come here and you can figure out something. Yes, often we need to drill. I brought last, last time demo because we had a, a bike that was kicked in Thailand and they broke mainly heads, but there was also a screw without head at all. So I had to figure out how to do it and we just put Dremel. We made a notch on the whatever was left because it was like maybe two millimeter out. So we just cut like this and we screw it like this. But it requires precision because it is carbon frame, yeah, you don't want a dremel or, or the drilling machine or something okay. else. Okay. <laughs> this one would not work because we tried. But in general, yeah, the dremel and the drilling machine, of course, and the grinder are the, the last resorts. How about top five? Uh, all the threads, grease, unless it's undoing itself while using, then you put Loctite, blue Loctite, which is 205, I think. Loctite 205, I'm sure. So there are three things that you should have at home. This, this, and then... <laughs> Wherever we have locked it, it doesn't matter. So basically, you should have a grease. This is ceramic grease, which is considered higher level. But you can buy whatever it is. Because for beginners, it doesn't matter. Yes. Unless you have like premium quality equipment, then better if you buy the expensive one. There are good creases like, for example, this is finish line, which is like most common cycling brand market and it's a good start, but there are also other options. 
depends on your budget. Cube like this will last if you are a single person using a bike and putting mechanics at home, this will last for like a year at least. Oh. Unless you eat it with bread or something. Do you use it? You say it will last a year after you get it throw it away? No, 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 last like, like, like you will just, you know, like to face it with this thing. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Because there's no, 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 no. There's no, no, no. There's no, no, no. There's no explanation there unless you keep it in, in the sun, yes? Yeah? Uh, when you when you buy this is ceramic grease, normal greases they will just say grease, yeah, like general use grease, yes. There's also grease with PTFA, PTFE, which is like teflon, teflon particles. Here are ceramic particles. And there is also something called dry grease, which is basically a graphite, but this is used for locks and stuff. There's no stuff on the bike. But just in case, especially if you buy on Tabo, if you look for grease, you buy something and sometimes not the thing that you want, yes? So you just need to make sure. If you go with Finish Line or any big brand for siding like Mako or Finish Line or some other brands, then it's pretty simple, yeah? This is bike dedicated stuff. But if you want like huge cans, like for us, for our use, we use a lot, and then we need to go for like automotive kind of stuff. Because bike will not tell you, oh, this is automatic grease and I don't like it, yeah, it's mm -hmm. good again. You just put whatever, whatever is greasy, okay. and it's part, okay. Which part screws would you grease? Mm. So, for screws, every, everything that has thread should use grease, not to seize. There is also something that is called copper paste, and this is mainly to use to prevent seizing, but the grease itself should be already good enough because here the, the torque is pretty low okay. yes unless you do the too much when you say everything which has a thread so basically every screw yeah. or other thread that's you have everything that okay. has a screw should be but it's not that it's required yeah here you don't need here you don't need because the torque is very low mm -hmm. but but here for example you need because this is pretty big mm -hmm. yeah also when you have different materials like aluminium or titanium and it's aluminum to aluminum, titanium to carbon, for example, or titanium to aluminum. This needs to be greased or use this specific type of paste to prevent seizing. Because again, aluminum will corrode, titanium will not corrode, but it can bond, it can get like chemical reaction, it can, can bond, and this will be impossible to undo unless you use this guy. Then, <laughs> then there is something called fiber grip, and this is mainly used for carbon. Nowadays, most of the stuff, which is handbars, stems, and steering uh, tubes, they come with uh, a layer prevents slipping air, yeah, but this is just to add more friction. So when you ride a bike and you hit a bump, you will not go down. Yes, for aluminium and steel, you will just tighten it harder. Yes, but for carbon. There is a certain amount of torque that if you go over, you will just damage the thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it will just crack. Good. Carbon is a great material, but it's quite brittle. So you need to be careful. Yes, so I would suggest you switch to carbon bike. You come here, you come here. So carbon uh, requires fiber grip. This is the fiber grip is the, the trademark, yes, but this kind of stuff. So I can show you what's the difference. Show me your finger. <laughs> yeah, two fingers. So this is grease, this is quite liquid actually. This is the fiber grip. You do like this. Come on. Yes. Next one. Okay. Well, then you try on him. I can see a difference. You feel a difference? I feel I want. I trust you, right? Yeah, yeah, you just, just, just oh, swing it to. <laughs> <laughs> this is so basically one thing is not a grease, yes. Yeah? This is to make more friction. This is to have friction, yes. This is to make things smooth, this is to make things rough. 
Yes. So this is to prevent slippage. Can you put them together? You can put them So for example, if you are in the middle of the woods and your zipper starts to slip and you cannot tighten hard there or your handlebar starts to you know, turn or anything, what you can do uh, is to open and just use a bit of sand, but you should have something to, to stick it, yes? So this, normally you just use it once when you be in the bike, when you do the full service, because during full service you need to clean everything, and this should prevent any any slippage of the parts, yes? It doesn't lock the bolts in? No, 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 you don't, you don't do the bolts, yes, oh. you just... So, so this, this you put on bolts, and moving parts, this you don't put on bolts, you don't use it on threads, okay. because you will mess it up. So when you put it, it's here, here inside, yeah? So you put on top of the seat pot, and you slide in, and then you tighten it. You don't put it here, yes? You put it on the seat pot. Then for the stand, you put it here also, not on the bolts. Because it's basically like putting sand in the, in the thread, yeah? So it will be super rough, and it's very difficult to undo. And for the stand, and the handbag you also do on the handbag and you just tighten it. Yeah? So make sure that this thing doesn't go into threads. This yes, this no. Yeah? Because that one's liquid, will it roll with it? It's not that liquid. Now it's hot, yes, so it's pretty melty, but but this is just So it won't drip off the bolts that are the ceramic one. Not drip off. It will be still, you know, okay. quite it's been a few times, yes. It's a bit oily now because it's hot yeah, by the window, but in general you need to make sure that you don't mix up these two things, yes? This is for smoothing, this is for making it up, yeah? Okay. And this is also quite useful to have at home. So you can get this. Cooking something. Yeah, cooking if you need to. Why you like everywhere? <laughs> 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 Try to the thing, is, the thing is that because it's uh, synthetic, yes? Just last longer, but if you really have no oil or anything, you can still use like olive oil or whatever, yeah? yeah. Olive oil will attract, it will work, but it will attract grit and, and crap from the raw, but it's, it's used. Yeah? Okay. The doctor was here, actually. So this is 243, not 205, yes? This thing, show you everything. This thing is to prevent things to unscrew. So, for example, if you have damaged thread, but there is still like half okay, mm -hmm. you can use this, because this is now in liquid form. It's like this. When, when you have screws, when you buy things, you know, they have like a blue layer. So this is basically this. Mm -hmm. It just makes the, the thread a bit thicker. So it makes the connection tighter. Mm -hmm. so, and this prevents from unscrewing. Yeah, you can also have it at home. Does it prevent seizing? Depends, but can help sometimes. Sometimes. Then, there is, we were talking about grease and now we will talk about oil, so it's important. So this is chain oil, yes? Dry? Yeah. So we have, basically we have two types of loop, and this comes here on the chain. We have dry loop, which is this one for dry conditions, which is like today for example, and wet loop, which is for wet condition. And basically the difference is the how fast it will be flushed out by the rain. In Shanghai the rain is quite acidic, so even the wet loop will be flushed quite quick. And this, because here you see it's metal to metal, yes? So this gives you a thin film of protection between metal to metal, so when it works, it doesn't wear off so quick, yes? So you need to always remember to make sure that your chain and dry frames are properly lubricated. What we do now at Clubhouse, we switch bikes to wax, because wax is like another level of protection, yeah? The layer is thicker and it lasts longer unless you ride in rain again, because this rain is pretty messy. And the main difference between wax and this is how clean is your drive frame after you ride. If you 
see a lot of people have always tattoo, mm -hmm. yeah, chain tattoo, either here or you know, they look like they, they just came back from coal mine, mm -hmm. like me every day here. Uh, do I have bike with the... Uh, I guess so. Show me the let me see, John Boy. Oh, do you use mine? Can you play it? <laughs> so, so, this is the bike with oil, yes? That is not taken care of properly. Yes? Yes. Or, Maybe yesterday, but in general, this is what oil will do, yes? It will prevent from destroying the drivetrain or slow it down, but it will be super messy. So if you need to do something on the bar, if you don't have the apron, like I have always, I always wear my apron, like a chef or sous chef, prevent my hair. See, I still have like spots on my clothes, yes? Most of the time. But, but this is the, um, what oil causes, yes? It just gets that. Yeah, this is my my victim. This is Josh actually. We forget names because we have lots of names. Yeah. 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 This is Josh. So what is on the chain of Josh's bike? Wax. Everyone, can you show the difference? Well, here, I just touched. Now it's a bit dead. Here, this, this is all from Nicholas's bike. Yes. He does not use wax. Okay, I I try. I show you. Very good. It's just. Kind of dirt that's collected. Yeah. Super, super small amount of dirt, yes. Yeah. Compared to this, you see, this is already after I clean now, yeah. And this is, so you can see, yeah. So we try to switch now. He has now super clean drive train, yeah, so we can show you. Basically, you can eat from it. Sounds like, yeah. Sounds like it's okay. So you see the chain? Chain looks like there's nothing on, yes? Yeah. But there's a layer of wires that prevents from destroying the drivetrain because the, the layer of the protection is much thicker than the oil. It's also quieter and smoother. Whoa! Yes. 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 So if you, if you try clean his bike, yeah, it should be pretty clean. <laughs> yes. It's pretty Yeah, it's a very small amount because John's bike, I come like half a meter away and I'm like, yeah. yeah, you're welcome. So, so we try to switch to this, but this is quite a complicated process. You can do it at home. If you want to try this one, you can come here and we can show you. No. Not as fluid when you cook it because the paraffin wax is like calm, yeah, it would be in a solid state, so you need to cook it. So you need to clean the chain and then you cook it in the wax and then you take it out and you let it dry and get the solid wax in. What is it? Knock off? Yeah. How do you refresh the wax? What? You clean the chain? And then you put it back in the crock pot with wax, you cook it, and then... So the process is basically very similar to the oil. You just see into the grease and clean throughout. But instead of putting oil on the rollers, you need to do the wax cooking, which takes way longer, but it's better for the craft. How often do you have to do it? Depends on how, how often you ride in, in the rain. If you don't ride in the rain? Yeah, 200, 300, 400k. If you ride in the rain? Then maybe one ride. Maybe. I don't say yes, but maybe. It depends on the, on the condition. If you're using the dry... If you don't get about the really nice of the, of the drive train, then this will be a bit longer than the wax for sure. But in general, because it's... Even if it says it's dry, dry means for the conditions, yes. It's not that this is dry, yes, after you put it on. It will still attract grit and, you know, dust from the road and all this crap. This is why it's so dirty. So, this grit will just wear off the drive train faster, yes, because all of this is touching each other, yes. What do you use to clean the train? Degreaser. And you have two types of degreaser in like industrial grade degreaser, which is very bad for environment, but works the fastest and the best. And then 
situs decreaser, which is based on some situs thingy, but it's still not so good for environment, so you cannot use it like now. Uh, what do you do this while the train is still on, or you just get the train off and put it in a... The washing, how we wash the bike, we do another workshop, because this is... Most of the people do it wrong. Yeah, they, they do it wrong, so we need to do it. Uh, we will show you how to do it, what you need to use, which liquids and what brushes and how to do it properly. Because in general, when people clean the bike, they first they do it wrong, they use wrong liquids, and then they mess up the shower most of the time because most of people wash at home in the bathroom. Can you just do it like dishes? You could, but still, it's, if you have dedicated stuff for it, it's way faster and more efficient. Do you clean the chain with those things you see on Taobao where you just put the chain in the thing and wind it through? <laughs> <laughs> you could, but what we do, what we do... Really? Ah! 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 No. This is oh. like 300 or something. This is part to Cyclone, Chain Scrubber, CN-5.2, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, no. So, so part two. Part two is the most famous brand for tools. They are expensive, but they are very good quality. They are US made, US designed and developed, blah, blah, blah. Everything is US. They made America great again. <laughs> this we don't use, like we have it because somebody donated it, but Basically, what you need to do to make sure this works is use the industrial grade. You go out and shoot. Yes, you do. Huh? You go and shoot. Yeah, I'm going to send my son to the hospital. Why? Crash. Bell again. Huh? Bike crash. Just huh? put him to sleep. Make him. So, so basically, you need to fill this with the. Decreaser, yeah, like half at least, or over half, or like to this line. line. Sorry, yeah. the mark. Because if not, they say to here, but don't trust this line, yeah? Because <laughs> basically what happens, when we put the decreaser, these brushes in the Hey, woolly! 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 So you have two sets of brushes and then this sponge, yes? So the chain goes here. This is to take care of the side, the main side, and this is just to take care of the inside. And then here is to some sort of clean. But in general, what it does, it's just taking the decreaser, yes, and scrubs a bit, and then you go, and then you do like many, 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 many hours. So what we do, when we do a service for the bike, especially when we change chain, we do a full service, and then most of the time the, the chain needs to be changed. Mm, in all times, you used pin to connect the chain, yes? So you put the pin and break it. Now we, every bike that we have here, when we change the chain, we put a quick link. A quick link, quick link, link. I can show you. Okay. Uh, yeah, quick link, as the name says, is a kind of quick connector for the, for the chain. So you can open, not like this, but you need a special tool like a scissors. You can open many times, take off the chain and clean it properly. So how we clean the chain? We just have like a bidon water bottle that we don't use. Maybe somebody likes, but we don't use. And then what we do is just put the degreaser inside, put the chain and quickly close it and just shake it. Yeah, so this is the cleaning. you can check. So basically this is like an right side of the, of the bigger linear. Yeah. So every chain that goes through here gets this. Because it's just way easier for us also later because bikes come for more servicing. And this is way easier to use. And if you have this you can also use it at home. You just need one tool that can open this quickly because you cannot open it again. Yeah. 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 Yeah, this is, the, the chain is black, yeah, but you know, this So, this is just way easier to, to service the chain. Yeah. So when we clean, yeah, I will show you this when we do a cleaning workshop, but in general we just use the degreaser, shake it, because there's a lot of grit in the 
let, let me draw a chain. So one link of the chain consists two parts. There's like inside part and then outside part, yes, and here is the, the pin. And that means here, yes. Here's the pin. And then again, and again, and again, yes. So <laughs> the thing is that here, over the pins, we have rollers. And this is where the chain touches the drive to yes. Also here. So if you look at the chain, it's like this. Not so much, but okay. Here are the pins, yes. So the roller is here, here, and here. So this is the, the place where it connects, yes. Here's the tooth of the... This this part touches the, the teeth of the... Either of the cogs here, or on the ground set, yes. So the thing is if you have a quick link, it just imitates this part, but you can open, yeah. This one just goes through but quick link, as you saw in the small one, it has like one side and one side. Mm -hmm. and there's like a hole mm -hmm. when you use the force to just lock in. And then do not open of course during the ride unless you have to remember. Uh, this is why I need this special tool to open it. But it's very simple and we suggest you also convert to this because you can then give a chain at home, you don't need to come to the workshop. We suggest you also come to the workshop so I can survive if you make it. But in general, this is just save your time and make sure that uh, you have this and then it's just way easier to clean the chain properly because if you just see the chain clean here, it doesn't mean that it's inside clean. Yeah? The inside is actually more important than the outside because this doesn't touch the drive train. The inside touches the drive train. Yes? Okay. So don't buy this because it's a waste of time and money. But then the cleaning workshop will come maybe next week. Then we will teach you everything one by one. Also, that's right. <laughs> because most of people. No, I, I tell you as a bike mechanics, bike mechanics like a doctor, yes? Yeah? So when you go to a doctor, you take a shower before, <laughs> hopefully, and you come clean, yes? I hope. If you go to the if dentist, you go, if you, your teeth ten times. Yes. If you come to a bike shop, most of the bikes, they look like they just went through, I don't know, garbage truck. Yes? So this is why I look like I, I run out of the mine, coal mine. Normally I should use glass, but I don't like glass because the, I like to feel things with my fingers. Not that I don't feel when I have glass, it's quite thin, but I just pre prefer without glass, so I'm getting dirty. So in general, the cleaner the bike is, the longer it will last. Yes? So you take care of this. It's not like you drop it here and then you think that everything will be fine, yeah? You don't know. How many swear words I can use? <laughs> and I can use a lot when I clean the bike. Why are you looking at him? No. <laughs> no. no. Some, some bikes, I can understand if the bike is dirty during the ride, yes. But there are certain bikes that people ride like this for like a month or two months. And the more you ride with the dirt and, and you know all this crap on the bike, the harder it is to clean. And we charge a certain amount for cleaning, we charge 150 for cleaning. And this should be efficient for like like bike like this, yes. But there are bikes that I should charge like 1,005 because it takes like half a day to clean, and I need to use 10 times more of my liquids. To, to just get rid of the crap that is on the bike, yes? So, if you can take care of the bike on your own, which I will teach you next week, I guess, then, then it's easier for you in the long run because the bike will survive more and last longer and will make less noises. Very often, actually, you have noises in the bike just because there is, like, for example, there is a small piece of sand here somewhere, which is enough to flush it with the shower or with the hose if you have access to the hose. 
But when you ride with this, you just grind this piece of sand and it just goes deeper and deeper and then you need to go to the doctor to so, sleep. Yeah? So, next one. So, just make sure that your bike is always clean. If you ride in rainy condition or in wet condition, make sure that at least you flush it down with water every ride. Don't care much about the drive frame, but you can also flush it with the water. But in general, just just make sure that you just from top to bottom and flush it because this will help also for me later if I need to work on the bike. Um, okay, what's the time? Seven twenty. You want a yeah. tiny break? Yeah. 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 Oh, and then I'll show you. Just show a bigger board, right? Okay, guys. Question to you: How many of you have mechanical setup? Mechanical setup, which is like this, that everything is activated to the line. You? How many ones hydraulic? You? Ah, okay. Why? 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 You have a mechanical lab, right? You have a mechanical lab. Yeah, yeah. You have like... Ancient. Ancient, yeah, for sure mechanical. You have a mechanical. Linda, you have a mechanical, yes, on your bike. On your specialized. I will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 Bring them, bring them class. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's somebody else. Okay, the DI2 we can we can do a separate workshop on electronic group sets because it's different. They group. should have the electronic group sets so so you should have. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then that's you can right. come next. Time. Okay, Kinski, can you help me to move the bike a bit forward? Okay. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Same. Well, it's, it's, it's the same. 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 It's the Drive train, which is the derailers. If you have an electronic one, like the rich people like Erika, do it. Then it's simple, but if you have mechanical, then you need to know a few things about this to make sure that you're able to adjust it at home or on the road or help somebody or just for fun. So we have two types of cables and housings. Yeah? So this is a cable steel line, yes, two types. One is for shifting, and one is for brakes, and I will explain why it's different. And two types of housing. Housing is the external part that goes, this black thing, yes, because the cable goes through. If you have just cable, then it's pretty hard, but some of the other bikes, they have external routing. This bike has internal routing. So the cables go through the frame, yes? It's not fully integrated, or my bike is fully integrated, so you see there's no cable. I still have two, two cables, but there are no cables at all visible, yes? So in this bike, this is internal routed bike, so the cables go through the frame. And here are the frame stoppers. So the housing goes to here, stops here, then you have the naked line, and then the line goes out, and then one goes to the front derailleur, one goes to the rear derailleur, and then two go to 
break read and then from break is completely out, it doesn't go to the frame because there's no need and this is this. Yeah? So the main difference between the same uh, the pure line that means only the cable yeah. does it have any shaping inside? Like you are oh, I need to go yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is the external routed bike. So, as you see, the housing goes to here, and then the naked line mm -hmm. goes out of the frame. Yes, and then depending on that, how the bike is made, sometimes there is like a guide down here, which is made of plastic too. Make it more smooth. But if it's integrated, is it also naked? Yeah, depends. Some some bikes required to have the housing inside like this. But most of the frames they have like a, this this thing, which is the end of the cable, and just stops here, and then the, the, just the line because it's light to this. Okay. Yeah. This this is heavy. No, but the cable doesn't touch the. No, it's not. Okay, good. No. That's not if it touches the frame, then yeah, you messed up. So. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, the two main differences are first, the size, the brake is thicker because it requires bigger forces you know, when you brake constantly, and then, especially here in Shanghai, when you want to hit a scooter, and then shifting. Shifting basically, you use when you shift, yes. So, the tension is only when you use the shifter. And then the second difference is the head. It's very simple. If you don't see, like by the size, you don't think, okay, maybe this one is breaking and this one is shifting. No, no. The head is the, the indicator. Yes, yeah? so this is shifting. It's like this, just like a cylinder. And this is like a mushroom. And this is a road bike type. Because we are talking about road bikes. Mountain bike type is different. But forget about mountain bikes from now. Yeah? So mushroom, brake. Cylinder, small cylinder is the shift. Yeah? And then the size also is different. You can see shifting is thinner and then the brake is thicker. The construction of the line <coughs> is just three thick many fibers. Yeah. Yeah. Now the housing, the housing is also different. First, again, the size, you see, thinner, thicker, so this is the shifting one, and then this is the brake. The main difference is if you look here, I guess it will be hard, they draw. What's this? Where's my pen? Okay. So basically, the house, <sighs> Let's say this is break, break and shift. If we go through, this is the outer, the black thing, and outer. Then inside you have steel in the break, and this is the biggest difference, yes? In the break, the steel goes like this, like this, spiral, yeah? In shifting, the outer is the same, yes? Sorry for my pen, it's a messy. <laughs> but the steel goes along like this. And you have like many fibers. They go like this around, yes? So they go like this. If you cut it here, then you will see that this, this ends like, like here. Yeah? Here will be, you will have just like a spot like this. Dots, yeah? So, why it's like this? Because shifting needs to be precise. This is compressionless housing. So when you shift, this this doesn't compress at all. So maybe it compresses like micrometer, yeah? But in general, it doesn't compress. This one will compress. So when you break, you still have a bit of modulation. Modulation means that it's like the harder you press, the, the, the harder it will break, of course. Yes. But there's always like a bit of movement that you can adjust with your fingers. So compression is for shifting, like compression is for shifting, this is this can be compressed, it's for breaking, yes? And this is bigger, this is five millimeter, 
this is for millimeter. So when you buy housing, let's come to me and I'll do everything for you. But <laughs> if you need to buy for your buy, if you have mechanical setup, of course you need to make sure that you need to buy stuff for shifting or for brake. Because if you buy for brakes, you cannot use it for shifting. Even if the cable will go through, no problem, it is because it's bigger. But it will not work at all. The shifting will be messed up completely just because this hose can compress way more. Plus also, you see this, this hose is way stiffer. This is way softer. And you can play with the, with the housing. Right, it's softer. Yeah, the brake housing is softer. Uh, is it also true for hydraulic? Hydraulic hose is different. Hydraulic hose. There should be any for that. Hydro is basically like this. Here is a, if the better quality hoses they have, there is like a lining here yeah, inside. The better quality hoses they have also lubrication, kind of lubrication inside the lining, because of course it's not like line touching the steel. Yeah, because of being with, there's always like a Teflon lining inside, like here, and then the line goes through, yes, and here through. But in general, even the cheap quality. Housing, if it's properly maintained, should last quite a bit. Then the lines, lines come in different types. Because as you see, this is just a few fibers of steel. So the cheap ones, when they turn it, it's like this. Like here, like here, like here, like here, like here, yeah. So here you need space, yes? Space. The better quality one will be uh, grind it so they would cut this so there will be no space yes so they will cut this excessive part out so it will be just just grounded like this yes and then it will be smoother and will attract less less crap because if you have the cheap one all the grip whenever it is exposed which basically in the internally routed bikes you have exposed here and here you just collect dust yeah so so it's just easier to mess it up. The better quality ones, like Nadula Ace, which is Shimano top level group set, they have coated cables, and this prevents the, the crap to be you know, sticking to the, to the cable. But this, this, whatever it is, the coating, coating, actually, with time, it just wears off. It looks like old skin, which is pretty weird. But this is how they do it, yes. So in general, the hydro, because you asked for the hydro, the hydro is the black one, the, and then inside is just the lining, yes, like this. Because here is liquid, so it doesn't require anything. It's just made of like plastic kind of. Yeah. And it's also stiffer than the these two. Yeah. We got here the sample so I can show you it. But for let's focus on mechanical, yeah. So again, the big difference, size in the head, and for the housing, is the, this is shifting. You cannot buy the brake one like this, or shifting like this. It's always like, this is shifting, this is brake. There were also other systems like alligator, or Jaguar Eileen, or some other stuff, and they are built from the lining, which is this internal part, and small aluminum pieces. They have like a piece like this, kind of, yes. So here is the nest, and here is a head. And then it's like, like this, yes. And then you just use these links to build up the amount of housing that you want. So the line will be like this, and you just add one, two, three, five, whatever amount you need, or whatever bike you have, yes. This is better seen also more way more expensive, it's lighter also, and it's steeper. So for shifting, this is the better option. For braking, it's also better. Because it will give you a better feel of the brake, yes? So you will not have this tiny compression. But uh, this requires skills to build, and it doesn't work on every bike. Especially when you have internally routed things through the handlebar, often it's pretty hard to, to build the bike, to make it track. And then, this is Shimano and SRAM, Campagnolo, because these are the three bigger brands. Campagnolo, different differences with the head. This, the shifting head, is a tiny bit smaller. 
and this one is also tiny bit smaller, like half a millimeter smaller, but it makes very big difference for the shifting. Because if you're Shimano line and Carbonyol, you often will mess it up by, because it's just tiny bit bigger, it will not go deep enough and it will start, start to block the shifter. Okay, so you will not be able to, to shift. So for Carbonyol, you should always buy dedicated cables. For the original Carbonyol or Jaguar like this one, also another brand that needs to be like companion specific, yes? Okay. How many of you know how to adjust brakes from zero? You know? Ashman? Any? Any? Because the brakes, even if you have, both of you, if you have, okay, you know because you're this, but you, even if you have electronic groups, your brakes are still normal yeah, and activated to the, to the line. So, okay, let me draw again. So this, this brake, this sponge, whatever it was, this So for a system like this, there are two things, yes, the shifter, let's, let's do the shifter, yes, here is shifter, and then the brake, brake, here like this, and then here. So, for braking, the line goes through here, from the front, here, goes through the housing, here and then wherever it needs to go, yeah, either through the frame or outside of the frame, it ends up here. This is barrel adjuster, which is very important. Goes through because this is one of the arm, and it's locked with the other arm, yes. And this is five mil, but in some cases it's four mil, especially with the new bikes, it's four millimeter. But the size is not so important because if you have a set of branches, you will find out. Then let's go here, yes. So the line goes here, and here's the housing. Okay. I cannot see anything, but it's always feeling the So it goes here, yeah, it goes here, and goes here, yeah. After one class. So there are, basically, for brake like this, there are only two things to adjust. Is the brake part position, which is this, and then how deep does it grab, yeah? So who knows how to adjust brakes? Nobody? Sorry? How to adjust the brakes, you know? The top part of the crew. Okay. So let's take it down. Okay. So, as I said, yeah, the line goes through here, goes through here. And normally, it depends on the bike. In China, very often, this will be a front brake. And those who ride motorcycle, they will also use it as a front brake. Because in motorcycle, this is a front brake, yes. And in the rest of the world, yes. In the rest of the world, this is a front brake, yes. So in UK, maybe, this will be front. This is for Italian people, this is for the other people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, in China, actually, well, even if you buy in one brand, often they have like, you know, the same bike model, you will have brakes like this or like this. Yeah. One will be here or here, which is sometimes confusing. But you can always swap it later, okay, no problem. It doesn't matter if it's hydraulic or mechanical or whatever, you can always swap. Yeah? But normally, so, it's only front is on that. Yeah, front is my front, everybody's front is like over Not everybody, that's the thing, not everybody. You don't show my bike. Yeah. No, you know that was sometimes when you just emergency brake, then you don't press that one, then you don't press that one. I know, I have no idea, I don't know if that. How do you brake? How do you brake? With my feet. Clean stumps? Clean stumps? Push on the pedal then. Yeah, you have fixed gear. Yeah. But you are retarded, so. <laughs> so in general, in general the rule is that mostly use front brake, yeah. Seventy percent up to seventy percent of braking should come from the front brake. Why? Because that's what the weight is. Yes. 
and this is how, when you steer, it's way more controlled. If you start breaking with the rear and you slip a bit, see how bye bye, yeah, you meet the same thing. Okay, when you go up <laughs> front and you really have the merchants, you stop to just flip, yeah. If you have a for an emergency, what do you do for an emergency? My shorts. My shorts are too low and the bike is too high. In emergency situations, you shift your weight like this. Of course, you need to learn this trick here, but you shift your weight as much as possible to the back, and then you press both. And then for sure you will. And there is a chance that the bike will end up like this. But if you shift the weight, there is also a big chance that you will not flip over. Well, you call it money. <laughs> so in general, break with the front more than with the rear, yes? In shitty situations, use both, but don't break always with the rear. I know some people that they always break with the rear, and the parts in the, in the back are almost done, and the front is like almost new. But this is wrong, yeah? You need to work on it, you need to break with front, yes? Yeah? This will give you more confidence on the road also, and faster turns and so on. Uh, okay, so how to adjust this stuff? In general, as I said, there are only two things to adjust. So one thing is the brake pad position, and the second thing, or actually the first thing is here, yeah, this, this connection, and then the, the brake pads. Because some people like when the brake wraps here, like very, very quick. Some people like when it's like almost like here. So just like much halfway, because in this situation, again, if you head like this, if you press too hard, there's a chance that you will squeeze your fingers and you will mess up. Yeah? You run like this and then you will just cut your fingers there. Yeah. So we rather suggest that you keep it, you keep it a bit further. Yeah? For hydraulic systems, so this works different because hydraulic systems, they have like preset position. Like you are always grabbing this. So whenever you go off the brake parts, you are always breaking the same kind of position. Yeah? Is there for the one on five hydraulics? Any mechanism? No. So Only in UX. I think we want to get the one five, not so much. But it works well. And everything is set properly in the so it works. I, I think I can sense a uh, little difference in the um, in the this is the test we tried to um actually but it's tiny. Then come thing. here and we can check we can check. So Okay. So what do we do? Let, let's work with this, yeah. Let's work with this. Because this should be enough to adjust brakes, yes? So the one thing that you need to remember is that when you put a new line, this this can use because you cannot be like three here, yes? <laughs> because you will, you know, catch all the scooters and everything. But the you say okay. <laughs> okay. You get this, this is the right position. Hey, then, then for the rear one, yeah, the rear goes here in this case. Sometimes we have different. You need to make sure that you have enough space so you can turn the handle on. Yes, if it's too short, it's also wrong. Because then you will be like this one, yes. Not that you need to use this kind of term very often, but just to make sure, yeah? Especially if you have a crash, you hopefully not. Hopefully not. If the handlebar goes like this, you just have it, yeah, this will snap everything, putting your balls and then everything. So, how do you see if the routing is correct? For the phone, this housing, is to go like easy bend from the handlebar and this is externally like the handlebar so you can just do it here and you can choose it here and just goes easy bend to the brake, yes? the straight with the line the back so we have time a bit more like right like here so this one is actually on the shorter side uh, I like to add time a bit more then for the rear again you just test with the the text probably yes. If it's too short, it's like this, you need to add. But if you cut it too short and yeah, better always to start with long one and just cut. Mm -hmm. But normally if we do service and we see that everything was okay on the whole setup, we just cut 
take off the housing and we just cut the same length. Most of the time we need to make it a bit shorter, but in general, it's especially factor the building by most of the time is correct, yes? So this is very important. Then on the bar, most of the time, the bar, here is just a small piece. Sometimes it will go from the top, depending on your frame, sometimes from the bottom. But in general, also should have like a nice, nice bend. It's called the tiny shoulder. Yes. Okay, so now when it comes to adjustment, when we put line through, it comes like this. So we use whichever feeds here in the four or five. Sure. Normally you use a guide, so you have a bike like this for service, you cut here, take this out, take the housing out, you put a guide, which is like a lining. Okay, so you put it the lining, so you just train it through, so it goes out here, so you have this here and this here, going out, but it goes through the whole thing. Yeah, so. Then you just train the line through, so it's very easy. If not, you can undo the, uh, the cable guides, which are this, this device here, yeah, this is my plastic. Okay. And then you just use the reset hook and the torch and just fish it up. Sometimes it takes one second, sometimes it takes like 10 days, but the guides are days this way. Because you use the old line that is already there, you just take the guide to the line. So it will always go the way it should be, yes? And then when you put a new line, to the guide and you just take off the guide from this side and see it. So, it's very easy. so what I normally do because there are different ways to do it, but what I normally do to adjust brakes is this is the button adjuster, yes? Use it for two things. One is to set the brake for the first time and then when you use the brake and the pulse and get it used and they will be in the hand. So you just adjust here make this will pull the line, yes? So what I do normally is like this. I just undo it here a few times, depending on the uh, group set. Will be, there's never the same amount of tens, yes? So some legs will be playing like five, some legs will be playing like two, whatever. It is by eye. Mm -hmm. Yes, I just undo like this for example. Then yeah, what I do is I put my hand here inside. Like this. Inside. And I press against the rim, yes. Mm -hmm. Then I, I make sure that the whole line is pulled back. And if it's like this, I just tie it. And this, this is very important. This is more on the brain when you have a flat and you need to take out the wind. Yes. This needs to be in the left position. Yeah. But if you open and you tighten the line, and it's against, then it can be rusty. Yes. Ah, so that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. So, so this needs to be in the left position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the, the brakes are already on the wheel. And then I just tighten a bit first. Release. Most of the time, you see, there's already like a bit of space, yes? I can tell I'm grabbing, but then I undo here, yeah? I undo. See? Mm -hmm. Done. So you basically check like that, if you like the amount of braking. And you see, this is where I like it, here, like midpoint. Mm -hmm. And I just type in the line. Tighten, and then I just check that when I open, it's in a space, like this is in a space, yes? This is what's in And basically that's it. If we talk about line adjustment, yes? And then there's the pad adjustment, which is a bit more complicated. But do you have any questions about the line? Uh, is there some method thing you need to do to the right side? In mountain bikes, you have in mountain bikes you have a spring that pulls the one arm like separately yeah, because the arms are separate. So the here, here, 
still there is like a, you need a, especially in the you have like a small adjustment that you can tighten a bit. Mm -hmm. But in general, if you do like I will show you now, it should be okay. You need to touch your fingers. Okay, so yeah. Because normally the thing is that because it's mounted here, yes. For the direct mount is different. But they don't have direct mount right here, so I can show you. Mm -hmm. As you can do next time. If it's like this, the other tab, just one board. You just send them the, the whole calibre like this, yes. We just see where the position is. Yes. It's just like this, you see. So you just need to make sure that this is in the middle, that the space between the brake pads and both sides is more or less the same. So you just put it in the same. Yeah, so I just use few slots, yes. And this is very simple. Like here, when you press, this is not good yet. Because you will see that the rim is being pushed in the middle. It means that on this side, there is not enough space. Yes, because they need to have like this instead of push the rim. Because then the player will feel softer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you just adjust a tiny bit more, yes? And then you check again. And now it's okay. And that's it. And then you just need to make sure that this is like, you know, being just like 60 millimeters. 6 to 8. Okay? And for the brake parts, so this is starting. The brake parts. Construction of the brake part is that uh, the newer bike you have brake shoe and the brake are blue. So the brake shoe is the, the plate that you slide in the brake. So in the old times it was just one one thing to get the first. So when you roll up the brake you chuck the whole thing in. Yeah? In this case, the, the newer bikes, it's easier because here is the small screw. So if you want to change brake parts, you just undo the screw. You don't touch anything else. You just undo the screw. Take out the brake pad, slide in new one, and for the brake pads, they have always direction and size, yes? So there is always a written forward and left and right side. You cannot mix it. If you mix it, then congratulation. Second, it's pretty hard to put wrong size. They don't fit. Yeah, they don't fit. Like you can, you know, use force, but again, congratulations. Yes, yeah. And in general, they say which is forward, which side is goes forward, yes, yeah, so it needs to point this direction because there is a space for the screw to go in yeah, instead of screw to the brake, but there is like a window here, there is like a space, empty space. And of course, because the bike goes like this, the screw is here. <laughs>
Okay, so for the brakes. Again, the brakes, they have like a big adjustment, yes? Because the, the brake shoe is built in a way that you can tow in, tow out, you know, you can adjust like this. Uh, okay. Thing that you need to know is that when the brake starts to squeal or makes some new noises, often the solution is to tow in, which means like this, brakes. And for this, you can use, for example, the Z tie or any like cable cut or whatever. So when you tighten the brake pad, just put it on one side in the back. Because towing means like that the this part of the brake pad will be out and the front will be in, yes. So to adjust the brake pad. But often, especially when you change wheels or you start doing some wheel stuff, uh, the brake pad position to the high or to low. So if we have this formula, I guess. It's like this. Also, the important thing for the brake shows is this tiny thingy, like a bit of fin or something. Normally, it suggests that this, this should be on the other side, yes? Because it looks like it's backwards. <laughs> Just to actually, I don't know what the function of the service. So, it's a road to front and a back. So, this looks like it actually should be on the other side. So, it should, should be like this, yes. Oh, this. Okay. But it's opposite, yes. So it starts like this and then goes down. Which in this case, this. In front is the same, yes. You see? So the tip of it needs to point forward. I don't know why it's like this, but it's like this, so just just keep it like this. British flag. Yeah. This. So this helps also to adjust like this, yes, and maybe it's just a holder. Okay. But I, I never use this. So in general, the easiest way to adjust the brake pad is when you have access to this brake lever, sometimes you need another set of hands to do it if the bike is too long. So, yeah, yeah, sometimes like this. So basically what you do, you just make sure, because you see this is the, the braking surface, yes? It's very easy to distinguish braking surface from the rim surface. Okay? You need to make sure that the brake part is in the lowest possible position in the braking surface, yes? So you cannot go below or too far. If it goes too far, you will press the tire and you die. Yeah? If you press below, maybe you don't die, but you will mess up the stickers and then the new, the new rims often have like special braking surface, yes? Yeah? So they have like a mesh or different type of carbon or whatever, just to make it better in the world. The old type of carbon and aluminum, they just they are just smooth. So you need to make sure that you just have this space so basically let's throw it in if you can see anything here still so this is the piece of rim and this is the braking surface this is like angry or whatever it is so here sometimes you have like this like this surface you can show you on my wheel So if you come come close to this bike, this is the old NV wheel. This is the new NV wheel. This is eighteen thousand. The whole wheel set, yeah, not just the front wheel, but it's, this one was the old was twenty two thousand London bank, long time ago. Yes. Wow, it's become cheaper. Yes, but in general, this is this is power meter. Yeah, this is no power meter. But in general, if you come here, if you come here, you can see this is completely smooth. Yes, yeah. you can touch with your yeah. finger. Yeah, yeah. This one has this special surface, which is like a like corrugation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Later, yeah? Yeah. 
I can touch to defend it just to see. Yeah, it's this for me that more than two years in charge because it's different between yours and yours. So we chance? No, we chance. you? <laughs> so this, because aluminum in wet breaks quite well, yes? But carbon in wet, you just, if you start breaking here, you will end up in Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is just to help to shorten the, the breaking distance, yes? You will maybe end up in, I don't know, well, Nanjing. Nanjing is different direction, but yeah, maybe there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know, yes? But this, this is the, the new generation. Some other brands, they have like cuts like this, for example, uh, or different type, but generally the newer brands, or the newer types of rims, they will have for one. Yeah, you have can it. see it on, on those zip tiles, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is how it's like this, sometimes like and this. This break has nothing. This thing is just like carbon. It's just carbon. Yeah. I, would, I could cut Some here. Is even more in there. yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. There's no breaking surface because the brake doesn't touch here. Yeah. The brake is touching the, the rotor. So something like this, then like this, yeah, like this, what you see here, and so on and so on. But generally, you don't expect the future all the DNA will be this? Yeah, it will be this like this. Or 90% will be this. So this is just an example, but but you can also notice that the, the better quality of the rim, the, the better the braking surface is. Yeah? If it's just smooth, then you need to make sure that you have good brakes and everything is properly adjusted. And best if you don't drive in the rim, but it's not and like it should stop. You were saying to have it as low as possible, as it just should get away from the tire, or? Uh, no, because the, you know, this is an arm, yeah, so the lower it gets, as long as it still fits in the braking surface, which is way easier to... That's a bit low? Low, like, like you know, low, like, like, like go down. Okay, yeah. Because then the, the leverage is better then, yeah? there's more force. Because the, if you do it here, the force that you put here is quite short. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so this yeah. is pretty simple. This is, the longer the, the lever, the, the more force. For the same input, the more force will be on the mm -hmm. on the brake. Yes. So basically, you can use this thing here, which we never figured out why we have this. And what you basically do is just press the brake. And then you just need to make sure everything is straight. Hold the brake. Then use the move to whatever I put it, and just tighten the brake. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Tighten. And again, you tighten easy first because if you tighten hard, there is a chance that you will twist the, the brake. Yes. And then you check if everything is correct. The easiest to, to see if everything is correct, but the, the brake lever will be quite stiff when you brake. If something is misaligned or it's like this, or you know, like. Some weird stuff is happening. The, the brake will be quite soft. It means that it touches the, the you know, all the surface of the brake what is touching the rim. If it's tight in because of the sound, it will be tiny bit softer. But then you want to get rid of the sound, yes. So you do it on purpose. So it, some sort of misalign, but again you do it on purpose, yes. And then after you do one side, you do the second side the same. And that's it for the brake, yeah? The front, exactly the same, just, just different side, yeah? So again, okay. is this, adjust by hand and, and by eye, okay, it's in the, the lowest possible position. Brake and hold, so it keeps tightened a bit, release, check if everything is okay, and if everything is okay, then this, like this, just hold like hold the brake part, just tighten. So you need to press this like against, yeah. And just tighten, and that's it. And press again, just in case. Okay, everything is fine. Done. Make sure that this is tight and this is tight. Yeah. If you don't tighten this when you break, you just pull the line and then you die. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Any questions about adjusting brakes? Yeah. That was pretty easy. Too much on I know. Any to be measured for these brakes? These brakes? You want to learn about these brakes? These brakes? It takes an hour because I got to this brake, so. These brakes require a separate workshop, I guess, because okay. this includes bleeding, how to prevent bubbles, how to spread the brakes when somebody presses when there is no no wheel inside and so on and so on. So about these brakes we can do completely separate. It will be shorter than this whole blah blah blah, but we can do separate one because we have two different types of brakes here, the air, the Shimano ones and the SRAM and the bleeding procedure is completely different. The bleeding is putting the oil in the air, releasing the air and putting oil in inside. So the procedure is completely different. Different type of oil, different tools, different procedure, everything is different. Okay, so this I, I think we keep as a separate workshop okay. because it's, okay. if I start talking blah 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 about this then we will never leave <laughs> this place. Okay, so any questions about breaks? Everything is clear? So who can repeat the process? You. <laughs> Johnny, come on. A what was a midterm? term test. Yeah, come on. Term. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So what do we do? For what? Measure the cable is broken. For To adjust the brake. Adjust the brake. You go with your little toolie thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> multi-tool. I remember multi-tool, right? Four mil, right? That depends on the brake. Well, four. We say four to six, right? <laughs> take that little screw off, right? And because and then you do this and that, and then it's done. Yeah? <laughs> and then you don't? Yeah. Okay. Then you bring it, bring it to Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Should have told you. As long as you bring it I here, then it yeah, I can accept. Yeah, this is correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> but yeah, in general, so the process is you put the line through. Yeah, if you have all the hoses cut in place. They are correct length, yes. But this is when you build like from the scratch or replace the whole thing, yes. For simple adjustment, just focus on these two screws. Yeah. But for the whole thing, you put the line through the cable, goes here or here, depends on which side you are working with. Then undo this a bit, and again a bit, yeah, because here you see there is still space, which means I undo it too much. But it's still okay, yeah, no problem. Because you can see this. As long as this is out on this side, then it's correct. It doesn't need to be. I just like to have things, you know, where there's no space. But then you can do it like twice. Then press like this, yes. Pull the line down. Lock it. Release. See if there's any space on the ID. If it's in any space, then just add a bit more. If there's no space, you, you add as long as there is enough space, yeah? and depending on how, how much you want to grab it. Some people like it shorter, some people like it deeper. You just do by feel, and if you work, you ask customer how, how far you like it. But some people you adjust based on the, you know, the personal preference, and they say, oh, this is too far, or this is too long, or this and that, and you need to adjust, yeah? So, brake pad, change the brake pad, this screw, yeah, so undo. And you don't need to like take it off, you just undo till it still sits in the in the in the thread, take the pad, chuck it in the garbage, put new one, tighten the line, the, the screw, done. Yes, to adjust the whole thing, undo here, and this this like it really has like 3D because yeah, it's round. So use your hand to make sure and eyes to make sure that this is in the lowest possible position. Break. Hold and tighten. Sometimes you need second pair of hands if the bike is long, so somebody can hold it and you adjust. But often you should be able to do it like this. Yeah. And the front is easier because it's way shorter. Yeah, this is way closer. And that's it. So things to remember: if it's too soft, either it's not centered or the brake parts are, you know, not adjusted properly. I don't say it will be always super hard. It depends also on the quality of the housing and quality of the line. But in general, this is like correct feel. And front will be always harder than the rear, just because it's shorter way. And here the, the housing breaks into two pieces, yes? So
here it splits into two and adds to the softness. Okay? Okay, now more difficult subject. The shifting. Yeah? Shifting. 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 Nothing about my bike. <laughs> no, I, I can show how to do it on here too, because it's very easy. Not, not as difficult, but it's okay. Let me show you the front of the bike. Cool. It's okay. Who knows how to recognize that the shifting is not adjusted properly? Yes. It doesn't change. Yes. The chain comes off. Yeah. Yes. So these three things to, to know. The sound is the easier because it just stays this way. Let's see. This chain is a bit dry. But in general, this is quality adjusted because it's just making too much noise, yes? It's a bit squeaky. If I add oil or what, again, it will be okay. Yeah, it will be quiet. But in general, it's, it's okay. So basically, here we have two things, yes? From the other, and there is here. There are two types of sound. If the from the other is rubbing, let me see if we can do that, please. Switch to the... This is the rubbing sound. Yeah, like this. It means that the cage of the derailleur is touching the chain, yeah? Yeah. The derailleur, the Shimano derailleur, they have something that is called three. So you have two positions, yes? Yeah? The what? This is the lowest position. So down here. Then you have the three, which is first position. One, three. It just moves tiny bit the derailleur, like moves like tiny bit like this, yeah? Yeah. So if you change the gear that are higher in the back, this is a bit stupid. Higher gear means more force, but it's smaller cog, yeah? So people often mix lower gear with the smaller cog. So this is the opposite side of the, of the cassette, yes? So lower gear means easier gear, means bigger cog. Higher gear means lower, yeah, higher power means smaller cog. Confusing, but this is how it is. Yeah. So generally, what the trim does is to prevent the chain rubbing when you change to the higher gear or to the lower gear. Yeah, because the trim is in this position, left and right. Yeah. So it just moves tiny bit between. Yeah. And then the step position. This is the shifting to the bigger bit. But again, if you shift just like this, very often you just go through the thing, yes? So now, in position, and there is like one more thing. You see? Move tiny bit, yes? So this is also to prevent chain rubbing when it's on, on smaller cogs. I have this, yes? In the front. Yeah? Now, important thing, the front derailleur has no barrel adjustment. Yes, there's nothing. The line just goes to the derailleur. So the front derailleur we can leave for later. We'll focus now on the, on the rear one because this is mainly main causing problems with bikes. We we'll use them. But we will go to this to rear also, yes. Okay. So for the rear, Ashman, maybe I'll give you a help. Or the or uh, just change gears, yes? So every click of the one smaller one. shifter, yes, you change okay. is to change one gear, yeah. Right. The bigger shift, the bigger lever, change up. See? Change it. The, the top level shifters, they can change three to five gears at once. So it's just deeper movement. The cheap ones, they can only change one, 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 one. Yeah. This should, this one of five, this should change like two at once. Yeah, so let's mis misadjust. Let's just see the sound. 
Yes, Mr. Light. Yes. Sounds familiar. We now know sound, yes. We took like what? Half second. Let me draw again. Because it's easier if I draw instead of you go on the ground. So what we have here is so we have the cassette. And the reinvigorator, we have two pulley wheels, yes? The bottom pulley wheel and the top pulley wheel. So this is the top pulley wheel and the bottom pulley wheel. And then the chain goes here, yes? It goes here and goes like this. It goes back here on top. And then it goes down, it goes there, yes? If you look from the side, this is the cassette. This is the crankset, yeah, the chain goes like this, just like this. This is the top and bottom. So you see the chain goes to here. Yeah? Yeah? So now, on the derailleur, you have three screws. The high limit screw, with says high and L and then there is on the other side there is like B B tension screw. High means for high gear, this is the limit screw. So this prevents high gear means low core, small core. Yes, a small core. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then low, this is high, yes, this is high, this is low. And the low, this is limit screw, yeah, limit, limit. Screw. This is B tension screw. Screw. So this is low, high. This limit screw prevents the derailleur to go too far here. Because if it goes too far, you the chain will just drop outside. Yes. Here are the, the spokes. Here, this is the arm. And the low limit screw prevents the derailleur because it will go here. Yes. Prevents the derailleur to go too far, so it will not drop the chain here, and then it will fuck up your spout and wheel, and then you die. Yes? Yes. Done a lot. Yeah. And this is just for the rear. So you have three screws. The B tension screw that goes here, this is B. This is high and low, yes, yeah, screw. So again, high, this is for high, and this is for low. Uh, in mechanical systems, these screws are pretty easy to check, especially if you have no chain. You just press with hand. In electronic, you need to do by eye. Because you cannot press the derailleur, because the motor will prevent it. If there's no electricity, the motor will prevent to push it. Unless you have super force and then just damage it. So where are these screws? Screws, the high, depending on the derailleur, but most of the time they are in very similar place, yes? Um, so B tension screw is by the hunger, so you can come closer. Because again, the whole thing is attached to the hunger that is attached to the frame, yes? So this is B tension screw. Yeah. And B tension screw is responsible for adjusting this space here. This space normally should be like half centimeter, but you need to check in the manual of your derailleur and on, on the whole system, yes? Okay. The bigger the cassette, so for example, if you have 1125, this can be quite close. So when it goes here, it will be close, yes? Yeah. Just the space to allow the chain to go through, and here also. But if you have 1134, actually you need to take this screw more, so this space will be bigger, because this cassette is also, you know, this is 34, yeah. this is, this would be like 1125. But 34 would be like this, yes? So just... So adjust, adjust, adjust this, this position, yes? Okay. The more you tighten, the, the more tension you can pull the, put on the screen and then just put this top pulley in the whole cage, yes? Because this is the cage. This will go down. So you need to make sure that you find the lowest position, the, like the lowest amount of space possible to still make it smooth, yeah? If you start 
because if you have the, the T there, like this, and the, the pulley has also, if this starts touching, then of course it's not enough space. Yeah? Clear? No. No clue this part, you know. Uh... Yeah, this one? It's this. Okay, yeah. Yeah? So if it starts touching, then it's not good. Because chain, in general, chain goes to this, yes? It's not that close, but it goes like this. So it's not like the chain will touch anything, but the teeth will touch like this, yes? So you have to make sure that you have enough space so they can smoothly go, yeah? And then high and low limit screws are below. And sometimes they're like this, sometimes they're like, like this. And then it's always H and L written below, yes? Yeah. yeah. So these are the screws for the limit. And these are the, this is the screw for the tension. Yeah? Okay. And then again, you have barrel adjuster like with the brake. And this, this has two functions. First, to initially adjust the tension of the cable. Second, is to adjust during the time because the line and housing will stretch, like the housing will not compress too much with time, but it will, and the line will stretch with time. Yeah, so this is just to compensate this small change. So, basically, to adjust the whole thing, you just need to know that when you adjust the, the control thing, When you adjust the high and low limit, yes. This, this is the last column, yes. Um, let's do like this. The pulley, the pulley is like this, yes. It's always like a center of the pulley. It needs to align with the last cog, yes. At the center of the pulley, yes. Or be tiny, tiny bit outwards. Because if it's in, the, there is a chance if the chain is like too close to here, it will make like click, 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 click. On the other side, if you do, do here, also needs to be in the middle, yeah? Because if it's a bit too far, if you pull harder, if you press harder, there is a chance that the chain will go, yeah? So basically what you do when you adjust it, you use the screwdriver, and basically if you have a stand like this, so you can have the bike higher, you just tend, yeah? And then you tighten, which means that it will prevent, on this side it will prevent to, to go. So if you tighten, it will go this side. If you loosen, it will go this side. Yes, because the spring will always pull it outwards. Nice. Sorry. Hush Can you take your batch here because I put it out? If you adjust this, then basically you are set because this will not change. This will be held by the screws, yes? No problem. The next thing you need to remember, if you have the barrel adjuster, again, as I said, if you were in the toilet, the line will stretch with time. So the barrel adjuster will help you to adjust with time. Unless you have electronic groups and there is other type of adjustment, but the motor will not stretch or it will not happen anything to it. It will always keep the same position. It's only when you change the wheel set because the tolerances can be you know, a bit different that you need to adjust. But in general, the DI2 and ETAP, they don't need any adjustment if you do it once and properly. And there's no adjustment for the indexing? There is on DI2, but... Normal yeah, there is. What will work? Yeah, yeah, there is. This is why I will show you now. So basically what is indexing, in the old times when you have the, the shifters on the down tube, or like in the crappy ATV bikes, yeah. there is no click, yeah, click, click, click. The click is the indexing, yes, which means that one click, one gear up or down. But all times you will just, you know, by eye. So indexing is to help you just to get the right gear, yeah. And to adjust this, normally they suggest that you use third or fourth cog from the higher gears. Yeah, because then, then more or less the chain is like straight, yes? Because if it goes outwards or inwards, the chain starts to, to be like this, yeah? It needs to be 
as, as straight as possible. I don't say it needs to be tied with force, sometimes it will be feet to some, whichever, yeah? You just look. If you think the chain is straight, then it's okay. So what you basically do, when you spin, yes, if you have some like this, here, yes, means that it's not indexing properly. So you, you do the barrel adjustment. If you do it anti-clockwise, you tighten the line. If you do it clockwise, you loosen the line. Loosen the line means that the derailleur will go this way. Tighten the line means that you go this way. You can see here. Change it. So, if you do it too much, let's loosen it a bit. So, if, you, if I do it too much, yes, if I do it too much, it will change the gear, yeah? Because there is so much adjustment. So what we need to do, the initial adjustment is like this. This barrel adjuster go as deep as possible. Yeah? So you do clockwise till it, it locks, yes? Then do the line. Again, as I said, the spring will always go to the, the lowest gear, yeah? So this is the time we need to adjust the limit screw, the high gear limit screw. And there's also one thing that the hunger on a new bike, it's pretty simple, it will be straight. But when you use the bike and it flips to this side, there's a chance when you hit the derailleur that the hunger will bend. And for this, you need to come here and we need to straighten the hunger. Because if it's tiny bit misaligned, whatever you do, it will always be either noisy or skip gears. Because the whole thing is designed to be in straight line. If it starts to be like this, if you tighten the same amount in straight and like this, this will move a bit more or less. Yes, yeah? so it will mess messed up. So you need to come here and it's like special tool to straighten the hunger. It's like this size too. But in general, what you do first is when you adjust the high limit screw, is use a screwdriver. It can be flat, best if you have Phillips. Let's see if this one works. And I'll show you. Okay, it's big because it's easier. Mm -hmm. So, like Phillips here, which is the X. And what you need to do, if we misadjust, this is slow. Most of the time the high gear is the top one, but you just need to read here, high lock. Yes? So now I am on the uh, let's see how far I can go. Here. So it went off means that the high limit screw was set not properly because it fell off the cassette, yes, you need to go back. Get back on the cassette, tighten the, the screw a bit, and see again. See again. So you're tightening it inwards, right? Yeah. Now you're tightening it inwards, right? Yeah. And it was falling off. Uh, clockwise means it goes deeper, means tightens, means the whole delay goes in. Yeah, you can see it from here, you see? It's moving. So you just find position where, again, the thumb here is aligned, yes? Don't okay. look at the bottom pulley, top at the top pulley. Look at the top pulley because this one, especially if the hunger is bent or something happens to the derailleur, is something like off. But because chain goes this direction, here, this needs to be aligned here, this needs to be more aligned. So basically, you just find position where the chain and the pulley is in the middle. Yeah? So let's see. Okay. So 
now hopefully you can tighten the line normally you just need to play with body like I said there is some misalignment but if you need to release the line again like with the brakes you need to make sure that first you pull it hard and I suggest you use pliers just if you pull with hands then sometimes it's not enough force because likes to, especially for the internal ear out of the legs to be stuck so yeah. basically you just Put it here and tighten. And now, when you start shifting, it will not shift at all. Yes? One gear, by the way, one gear, nothing else. Second gear, like nothing. Third gear, so you are still going to put it here. So now there are two options. Either you go back to pliers or you use the barrel adapter. There is many three that you can do. Here, this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the second magic trick. But in general, we use pliers, smaller big ones, small pliers. In this case, and do like this. Now it's on the uh, second highest gear. Yes. So we use the whole thing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You go down, so you just click it, You undo the line. And sometimes it works, sometimes not, but you can try. And don't change the gear, yeah? it's still on the, on the second gear. Yeah? If you start spinning, it will go back. Now grab the line and pull. See how much I pull. Shit goes of line, yeah? Like one centimeter more. Let's see if this will work. Again, sometimes it works straight on, sometimes not. So now, if I start pedaling, it should drop to the smallest. Let's see. Yeah, yes, it did. So now, hopefully, there is enough tension. So we already start changing gears now. Ashman, you can help me here. So you just do, do one, one here up. Yeah. Change. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even touch the barrel adapter. This is the bike mechanic trick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tension. Okay. Yeah. Because this allows the line to have the proper tension straight without touching the barrel adapter. It's tricky to practice many times to do it. We'll try tonight after we break it and we we'll yes. call you. Yes. <laughs> but in general, basically from now on, the whole gear system should shift no problem. Yes, you can do it again. Do one more Ready, just shift. Go, go to the last. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. It's not going to No, it's not going to be. Okay. Okay. So we do it again. There's no spike. But this you are doing only through pulling the uh, cable, right? Okay. It's like this. Often, with time, actually, when you adjust, you will see that the first time was here, yes, and later it will just go more, 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 more. And that is the time that eventually you need to change the line. Because it will be so stretched that the amount of the movement here will not be enough to pull the whole line. Josh is going to get on his bike too. Nothing will hit the brakes. 
the shifters as well. <laughs> He'll be stuck in that one, driving yes, stuck in the <laughs> <laughs> So this is the time when we start touching the bio like that. Yeah. Just type and then you cancel okay. the okay. noise. So bio is like fine-tuning. Okay. Otherwise, you can get the equipment. Like, fine-tuning is the end. Otherwise, no bio for fine-tuning. Okay. And you need to check on, on at least few things so because I can see. Yeah. No, no, it's okay. And this is basically how when it starts to If you have no line, yeah. this prevents <coughs> the jump to fall from the from outside or inside. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. Okay. If it's high gear, which is the smallest scout, you are just the, the, the top one. This prevents trying to go off the cassette and be jumped in the frame. The low gear, which is the big code, prevents trying to fall onto the spokes and mess up your so you can't test the low gear one without it being attached because otherwise it would You can, you can. You just use your hand. You know, can still do it with your hand. Yeah. But how do you know that that's right? Because you just push it up. Just look. So this, the, the, the top pulley wheel needs to be aligned with this, as I showed you. Mm -hmm. And then for the low one, you see the same. Just you look at the, so you just press here. And then you just look if it's in the middle there. <coughs> Because if it goes too far, then it will just drop your chain. So that, that screw will stop it when you pull it down, yes. it won't go Yeah, yeah because it will just okay. be like, like this. You will press against the screw and this requires force to break it. Okay? Talk about it. Vasan, I'll subscribe to your Johu channel. I will make you buy KOL. We okay. shoot videos of you and then you can be an online training platform. <laughs> Total. So, I become a YouTuber. Yeah. So, okay. any questions about the re derailleur adjustment? Via electronic one? Yes. If you buy electronic one, then super simple. You adjust it once, which is the limit screw basically, and then the rest will be done by the CPU and the, and the controller box. So, it's super simple. So, to adjust, we will not adjust on Erika's bike, but to adjust basically what you need to do. You can actually, because you're going to fix it later. Yeah. You can find out. <laughs> so basically what you need to do, yeah. depends on the bike. Eat up, eat up is different because Shimano is a mechanical electronic. Yes, you still have the left shifter for the front gear and the rear, the rear gear is for the right. For eat up. For each up, which is this one, this is to do the lower gear in the back. This is to do the higher gear. And if you want to change front, you press both at the same time. So oh, this is like for retarded people like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So only one. This is see it changing. Mm -hmm. This is just to get it. So basically this is completely separated and it's super simple. Yeah, you submit it and you front mode. You press both at the same time. And if you want to go the other up and you come down to the yeah. yeah. It's very hard to mix it. If you mix it then okay. 
can you invite it to where we are? Can you worship me? Five hundred a month. <laughs> okay. So any questions about the adjustment of the rear? I guess nobody remembers anything but already screw up a lot of bikes. No. So yeah, the, the trick, remember the trick, but the trick is uh, we need to train, yes? So go to the second last call, release the line, and release the line, don't spin, drop the gears in the shifter, and then pull the line, tighten, and then spin once. So it should allow chain to go on the lows. Sometimes you pull too hard, it will stay, means much so you need to redo but this this helps a lot because the barrel adjuster is just for, for fine tuning the fine tuning fine tuning is for fine tuning as it says but <laughs> it also you need to use it with time because again the line is stretched yes so yeah. always start with the barrel adjuster in fully yeah like fully fully you can leave yourself tiny bit just if, if you mess up the limit screw. But in general, if you do it the full way in, it should be okay, yes? Because normally you need to add the tension, not release the tension. Yes? Answer this. For the front, it's pretty similar, but again, you have no barrel adjuster here, so you need to make sure whenever you do service that the bike shop installs this, and this is the external barrel adjuster here, yeah, which is like separated from the whole system, and this comes as a separate part. So you need to make sure that they install this. No, 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 there's no, no big tension. So there is... The only thing that gives the tension is the spring. So to adjust this, for the front there are two things. Sorry. Don't break the Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Jesus, hush me. Sorry. So there are two things that you need to remember when you adjust the front. First, the position up, because this needs to be like 3 millimeter, maybe 2, 3 millimeter higher than the, the teeth. And normally the front area the screen will always pull it to the smaller hog, which is the lower KVS. So when you adjust this you need to press like this with your fingers. Because if there is no line, it will just pull it to the small cog. Yeah. 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 Preventing the chain to yeah, yeah, yeah. So the chain doesn't go into the between the ring and the crank. Then, for the, so this is one position up down, and the second position is like this, yes? You need to make sure that it's aligned, which is straight. Because if it's like this, it will rub. If it's like this, it will often help you to drop the chain, yes? So everything needs to be aligned. Because this whole system is front and back, but it needs to be straight, yeah? Then, to adjust, again, you do the same, yeah? First, the barrel adjuster to zero, so it's like the least tension possible. Second, when you do things, you need to make sure that when you pull the line, I will not do the front with you, because this, if I mess up, then I will save it forever. <laughs> and there's always a chance that, that it, it will mess up. This is the old type of derailers. The new derailers, they often have like a, kind of barrel adjuster on top here to help to adjust the tension but it's always good to have this as additional like dual dual adjustment yes 
So then you all have time to derive mechanical behaviors. You can check it on the hands by the S works that is there on the table. But in general, most of you. No, he wants to sell it. He wants to sell yes. the things. Notes and the S works. Is too smooth. No money. What you so again, okay, you have also these screws, yes, here, high end and low end. So again, limit screws are to prevent that you don't, when you shift, you don't go too far this way or that way, yes. Last time, Josh lost his chain, it went out, and he was sprinting, and then he had to recover for three weeks. Because he had the rush from basically from the ankle to the whole body was messed. Yeah. Then you need to remember that the front derailleur often it shows you where the line needs to go, so you need to refer to the manual because it's not always on, on top, yes. Sometimes it's, it's inside, like here, sometimes outside, and depending on the company, or sometimes require additional element to install and you buy it separately because sometimes the line is just too close to the whole derailleur so it's like pushing a bit so the pair always do not enough load. then SRAM doesn't have trim position because the cage is bigger so you don't need to focus on that but Shimano and Campagnolo they have so you need to make sure when you add the tension that when you click it actually moves a bit, yes? Because the shifter can click and can do nothing here, yes? Which means that the tension is too low. So if the tension is correct, if you click once, it should move a bit. If you click the second time, it move, moves a lot, and then the third time, it's again a small. So when you drop down, small, big, and then small, yes? No, it makes sense. I had a mountain bike before with uh, three chain rings, and uh -huh. I just thought it's because the the middle one is missing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, it really <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> Are we almost finished here? Yes. Eva and Alex Nick said they want to come. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> You can settle. So then, like, I, I would, know, I would I like told them to come. Three hours. Yeah. So we're going to, to just conclude yeah. what we've just learned. So they didn't pick me, and it's almost over. Drop so my hand. Yeah, it's, long, yeah, it's longer than planned, but, but you see, even for this kind of stuff, it requires a lot of blah blah, because a lot of things need to be covered even for single things. So, just to sum up, the important things when you adjust anything that has line. The barrel adjusters, because this is for fine tuning. Then for brakes, you need to make sure that the brakes are in the lowest possible position for the surface, not the lowest that caliper allows you. Because sometimes for the ring, the lowest will be like midway. Yes, sometimes will be the lowest, sometimes higher. Yes, so you just need to make sure that it's aligned to the braking surface of the ring. The third thing for the brake parts. Also, you need to remember that carbon rims require different brake parts. Aluminium rims require different brake parts. If you have aluminium brake parts, you should not ride on, alum on carbon rims because the, brake, the compound is different. And also, when you ride aluminium, it just gets fibers of aluminium into the brake parts. So if you use it on carbon, the aluminium in the brake part that is standard, it will just scratch the whole thing. Yeah. So it's not like you will die like instantly, but there's a chance you will get some from it. So, so don't mix up the, the brake parts, yes? Right, thanks. Yeah. For derailers, you adjust first the main tension, you use pliers. Sorry. Use pliers. Best because if you put with the, if you have new line, yeah, which is way longer, then it's easy. But if you need to adjust on made by, the line is cut, so it's pretty hard to pull. This is why you use pliers because you can use more force in, in shorter line. Then you tighten, then you see if everything is okay. Which okay means no sound. They're yeah, not just clicking sound. Like click, 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 click. If there is sound, either you do the main tension first, or you just start playing with the adjustment. The fine tuning best if you do it like third or fourth or fifth cup because it's in the chain, it's in the straight line. But you still need best if you go to all because if you have sound in other cogs, like the lowest of the, the lowest, which is on this side and the highest on this side, 
there is a chance that the hand gets is bent, and then you need to come here and adjust. You can use also this hand and just do like this, but if you have this tool, it's way more precise. And hand is made of aluminium, so if you start playing with this too much, then you just break and then yeah. And then make sure the bike is clean, the lines are some sort of clean. And yeah, five to six thousand, let's say, you should come and at least check it. I'll check every two thousand and at six thousand range, there's a chance that the thing needs to be changed. At least twice a year. Yeah, if you ride like, if you ride like, yeah, if you ride like ten thousand, then it should be like twice a year for full service. So best is to do full service. Uh, like mid season when you ride a lot and then before winter unless you use indoor trainer then after winter because you will sweat a lot into the bike so you will sweat the bike much quicker actually than that it was ok any questions? No, I will call you tomorrow when I have got something. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's the uh, strategy. You find out what you want and then uh, we have to get here. Yeah. You, you just miss saying the most important part. Yeah. Actually, I didn't miss anything, I hope. No, but hey, if you have any questions, you're going to come here and we can discuss or ask me. So, um, or just come here and let me know what you want. Next time we will be working in the workshop. So we can bring our bikes and you yeah, can. Yeah. You want to give a good example about the bike? She bike. She bike. She bike. Yeah, yeah. 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 the same way. She haven't been good like two years, I think. Yeah. 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 It's hard to be mine. <laughs> I don't rain with that one, I just never use it. Yeah, it could be. I broke the crank on the second day in China. So I, I, I didn't. Uh, they took the multi tools in, in the airport. Yeah, I know, by mistake, I took it with me, but anyway, they took it, so I arrived to the dormitory, it has no tools, I have no idea where to buy things either. And I managed to put one pedal with scissors, but I fucked up the second one. <laughs> so then I tried to turn off to the shop, and by the time I arrived, I uh, fucked up the crank. Well, not even on the left one, so I can just change the, the thing. It wasn't the right, so I fucked up the whole crank. Second day in chat. Not bad. So yeah, play with your bikes. Because you need yeah, I can tell you what I like here and you still need to practice. Yeah, the practice is more important than theory. Uh, play with your bikes. If you miss a line anything then there is always a chance you can find the position that you should be If you don't practice then yeah, whatever amount of theory you will have, you will forget like in ten minutes. We'll go right now and we'll do the whole thing off with our bikes and we'll come tomorrow morning. Okay. I will not be here tomorrow morning, but still. <laughs> so you do the zero uh, extension and then halfway you say, oh shit. Father for the first time. We go to small school so we can do everything. I'm saving money, I'm not even thought about it. 19 hours. Okay. Happy? Happy. Well, thank you. Thank you much, Blabla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, what would you change? I'll turn this and um, Polish. Polish? You want to see Polish? No. Yeah. So, so we're we'll we'll good at the history lesson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 99. Yes. Uh, it's 129, but because it's workshop, we sell it at 99, so. Ah, okay. Do. It's promo. Promo time. Mm -hmm. What about the process? What do you do? Yeah. I know. I know what's this. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank